What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're an indie artist looking for an album review and some promo, you can hit up Luke at redmattersite.com. And what I have for you boys and girls today is my review for Raekwon's new album, Fly International, Luxurious Art. Now Raekwon has always been one of my favorite Wu-Tang members, and after hearing him talk a lot of shit about the Wu-Tang's last album, A Better Tomorrow, I thought that he was going to hit us upside the head with some of that grimy, classic, mafia, Wu-Tang shit. But unfortunately, this album often comes across as an attempt to reach the mainstream and possibly a younger audience as well. Especially with poppy songs on it like All About You featuring Estelle. It's not an all-out awful song really, but it just sounds like a rap and R&B hit from 5 to 10 years ago, so it's a little bit outdated. Estelle's singing on this song is fine, but overall, I think it's the features on this album that really hurt it the most. I mean, instead of having all kinds of great features from Wu-Tang members and affiliates, we have 2 Chainz spitting about eating his spaghetti with machetes on FILA World, and French Montana dropping mediocre bars as always on Wall to Wall. French Montana delivers a sing-songy hook and a stuffy voice on Wall to Wall, but thankfully, Busta Rhymes is featured on this track as well, and his intensity really helps lift up the track. The piano and sample-based production on Wall to Wall is on point, but for the most part, a lot of the production on this album is a little bit stale. Not that the beats are all-out awful, they just don't really make for any OH SHIT moments. For example, ASAP Rocky and Raekwon both drop great verses on I Got Money, but the beat is just uninteresting and uninspired, and much like All About You, it sounds a little bit outdated. So that beat, along with the I Got Money theme of the song, really just kind of makes it a bland, typical track. But it would work in your car. One of the best songs on here, though, is Four in the Morning, produced by Scram Jones and featuring Ghostface Killa. This is just a quintessential Ray and Ghost track filled with gangsterisms and slanguage about drugs and guns, and this is one of the few songs on here that I think will really please the Wu-Tang fans. Ghostface is also featured on the funky and soulful track Reverie, aka Wraith, where Raekwon refers to the click as the Al Pacino's rap. Rick Ross is also featured on this song, but as expected, he just brings one of his copy and paste verses. But Ghostface is on this track to prove once more that he is the most consistent Wu-Tang member out. I swear, everything that he's been putting out over the years has been on point. There hasn't really been anything that I've hated. And I think that he'll be 80 years old and still rocking Tim's and dropping quality bars. Ultimately though, I think that this album is a far cry from what Raekwon fans or even Wu-Tang fans want to hear from him. And I think that's too bad because even his last album from 2009, Only Built for Cuban Links 2, had that grimy feel that Raekwon perfected on his previous albums, especially because of the better features and also because of the great production from guys like Dr. Dre, Jay Dilla, Scram Jones, RZA, Alchemist, and more. He just had a crazy lineup on that album. We do get a little bit of grimy boom bap rap on this album though. On the song Soundboy Kill It, we get some nice hard drums, but then Melanie Fiona starts singing and it kind of throws the whole vibe off a little bit. Assassin is also featured on the song flipping a reggae flow, but this whole song just seems disjointed and like it's lacking direction. In fact, a lot of the features on here feel forced and just thrown together. But having Snoop Dogg sound like 90's Snoop Dogg on 1212 produced by Scoop DeVille made for one of the best moments on the whole album. Out of all the tracks on here though, only three of them are solos, and they're actually three of the better tracks. Nautilus gives us some hard body production from Scram Jones and Kingpin Bars from Raekwon, and Live to Die and Heated Nights are both really laid back tracks. Heated Nights has a serious driving and thinking vibe to it, and Raekwon sounds right at home spitting about being a Pyrex king with cartel connections on the S1 produced Live to Die. But to me, this is just an incredibly painfully average album from an above average MC who also just happens to be a legend. I don't really hate on Raekwon for going for a more commercial and mainstream style here, because maybe he's just growing and evolving as an artist and a person but I just feel that he's way better than this album. 
See, Raekwon is a trailblazer, a pioneer, and a trendsetter. Not someone who should be out here following trends. And that's why I give this one a 3 out of 5. Raekwon still has bars, but it's the spotty features and production that really take away from this album. But that's just what I thought about it. Hit me up in the comments section to let me know what you think. And as usual, do all that good YouTube and social media stuff. Where you like my videos, you share them, you follow me on Twitter, you retweet my videos, and you especially subscribe to my channel because that's the one that helps me out the most. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching once again.